Jorge Rojas Lopez and Juan Francisco Estrada Gonzalez are serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole after being convicted in 2009 of kidnapping and other crimes. Prosecutors say Lopez and Gonzalez are leaders of the Los Palillos gang, believed to be a branch of the Ariano Felix Mexican drug cartel. The men were among 17 alleged gang members originally indicted for kidnapping, torture, and killing nine people in San Diego's South Bay, dumping their bodies in Chula Vista and Bonita. Two of those bodies were also dissolved in acid. Professor Randy Grossman with the Thomas Jefferson School of Law in San Diego is here with more on this case. Welcome. Hi. Let's talk a little bit uh, about this. Gonzalez and Lopez are already currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Why would the DA start another trial? Well, there's really a couple of factors. One is it's a much more serious offense murder. They could be facing the death penalty, which is a different penalty than life without the possibility of parole. Secondly, we're talking about the victims. They may want some closure. Right now, you have these defendants that are incarcerated, and the reason is because they were convicted of a different crime. Now you can bring closure to the families of the victims. If they are convicted of this murder, how likely is it that, uh, since they already have a life sentence, that they would actually get the death penalty and actually be executed? The fact that they already have a life sentence will have no bearing whatsoever on the fact whether they are actually executed. Currently, the death penalty is still on the books here in California. Although it's not enforced that frequently, they would still be on death row should that be the finding of the court and the jury. And their life would change in prison if they were on death row. Certainly, there are different amenities, different privileges that are associated with if you're there for a specific amount of time, if you're there, life without the possibility of parole, or if you're on death row. They may not have access to some of the things that they've become used to just serving a life sentence. Now, more than 200 witnesses, I'm told, are expected to be called upon um, during this trial, which could make this very lengthy, I believe six months to a year. It would be the county's longest trial in history. Um, how much could this cost if it ends up going that long? Oh, you're easily talking hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars. It is very expensive. You're paying a judge's salary. You're paying the courtroom staff, which consists of multiple bailiffs, of a court reporter, of interpreters. And then, of course, you have the attorneys. You have a deputy district attorney, and they may have public defenders as well. So it does get quite expensive. I think some would argue that this second trial for these men is a waste of taxpayer dollars, a waste of court resources, especially after courts in California have been stripped back so much uh, with the budget cuts. Uh, what would the response be to that? Is there plenty of money to do this? I don't know that there's plenty of money. As you state, there's a fiscal budget crisis in the state of California, unprecedented cuts to the courts, really limiting access for all of us to get into the courts, whether it's criminal matters, civil matters. So, But there is a very compelling argument spending this amount of money. But as we've already discussed, this is a much more serious crime. We're talking about 15 different victims that were brutally murdered. And does it help to bring some closure to these families? Maybe. Do you think that this trial could be sort of a, a way for the DA to send a message to uh, drug cartel gang members, like, not on our backyard, not in San Diego, here's what's going to happen to you? Certainly, it's always a factor that the district attorney's office is going to take into account. We want to send a message. We want to say it to the public. Hey, don't do this in our community. We're not going to stand for it. All right. We will see what happens. Law Professor Randy Grossman, thanks so much for talking with us. Pleasure to be here.